ladies and gentlemen, the right priorities for Queensland's future. Those are real Queenslanders, real stories of which the Labor Party say are made up. The Labor Party say crime is a media beat up. They're not. They're real stories, real Queenslanders. Ladies and gentlemen, our leader to take this vision forward, to set out the right priorities for Queensland's future. Please give it up for our leader, Mr. David Christopoli. corner of the state. They're the experience of Queenslanders and they are living it every day. They're living it in their homes, on their streets, in their communities. And if you listen, you would know Queenslanders are making one thing very, very clear. Now, more than ever, Queenslanders want a government that has the right priorities for Queensland. The right priorities for them and the right priorities for their families. Friends, I speak to you today as we approach the 12-month mark to go. And as I stand before you, I am reminded of my earliest conversations with you. And we said at the time the need for us to prove to Queenslanders that we were ready to govern. I asked you to help bring unity to the LNP as a first step to prove to Queenslanders we could be trusted to put their, their interests ahead of our interests. Together, we have delivered on that promise. It didn't need blind obedience, the style of our political opponents. Our strong unity came from a constructive effort, and it meant that natural disagreements, they might have occurred, but they were navigated in a respectful way, with unity, a sense of purpose, discipline, and it has made us stronger still. And you just saw the example of it then, with a crop of candidates as good as this state has seen, as early as this state has seen, hungry to serve. I want to thank the role of the Deputy Leader in both identifying and helping supporting them early. There will be more to come, and it wouldn't be possible without the discipline and the processes of our Secretariat. And to you, Mr President, the sacrifices you have made uh, will forever hold this organisation in great stead and we are very, very grateful for it. <laughs> to our State Director, a sharper political mind I've never seen, to the leaders of our Federal, Liberal and National Party, both Queenslanders, uh, those who serve at local government, particularly BCC, who wear our colours as they go into battle. Thank you all for providing the stability we as an organisation have desperately needed. The efforts and discipline of the state councillors and the rest of the LNP membership have allowed our parliamentary team to demonstrate a focus on priorities. Through your efforts, we have been able to address the challenges Queenslanders face. And I contrast our sense of unity, our laser-like focus, with that of our political opponents. In the last few months and the last few days, the disunity and dysfunction of the government, the constant leaks against the Premier, senior ministers auditioning for a role that they want rather than the one that they have, it would be comical if it wasn't so dire for Queenslanders. Today, the sad reality for Queenslanders is the Labor government isn't focused on their priorities because after nearly a decade in power, Labor is absorbed with themselves, their job prospects. Labor is now a government that has the wrong priorities. Unfortunately, the result is that Queenslanders miss out. It means youth crime spirals out of control. 
It means hospital ambulance ramping and those wait lists grow ever longer. It means cost of living is not addressed. It means housing is increasingly out of reach for the young and vulnerable, and it can't go on. Labor's chaos and crisis is costing Queenslanders in every corner, in every aspect of their lives, and it has to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am honoured to outline to you a blueprint for Queensland. It is a blueprint created from the experiences and stories of Queenslanders as our team have gone across the state. These experiences, us listening to Queenslanders, have informed our priorities. And today we are releasing a blueprint to deliver on those priorities, to prove to Queenslanders the LNP has the right priorities for Queensland's futures. Our priorities are Queenslanders' priorities. Our focus is on the issues that matter to Queenslanders. This blueprint will guide the policies and the decisions of a future LNP government to ensure we deliver the right priorities for Queensland's future. The LNP's blueprint for the state, the right priorities for Queensland's future, prioritises five key areas. Making our community safer, easier access to health services, saving you paying Labor's failures, securing our housing foundations and working harder for Queenslanders. <laughs> Friends, Queensland is the state of opportunity, but for too long it's been held back by a government wrapped in chaos and crisis. We have outlined priorities across every area of government to return integrity to government, to restore the services Queenslanders need and to manage our economy responsibly. For Queenslanders, making our community safer means more police on the beat. It means rewriting the Youth Justice Act and finally getting early intervention working. For Queenslanders, easier access to healthcare services means driving down ambulance ramping and surgery wait lists as well as reopening maternity services in regional Queensland. <laughs> for Queenslanders, saving you paying for Labor's failures means reducing government waste, delivering projects on time and on budget, and driving down the cost of living. For Queenslanders, securing our housing future means improving housing affordability and increasing home ownership, as well as delivering the infrastructure needed to protect our way of life. And working harder for Queenslanders, that means governing with integrity. It means allowing classroom time for teachers, empowering the public service, and ensuring energy is affordable, reliable, and sustainable. For Queenslanders, good government means having the right priorities for Queensland's future. For too long, Queenslanders have been forced to endure the chaos and crisis of this Labor government, but we are charting a new course. Over the coming months, we will continue to visit every corner of our state to listen to Queenslanders, their experiences and the issues that matter to them. Our blueprint has been created by Queenslanders, for Queenslanders. And today we're releasing it to show that this will be the document that guides policy development in this state. Should be elected, if we're given that privilege, it will be the blueprint for an LNP government. For months, we have spoken about the challenge of housing affordability, how the Queensland housing crisis has worsened under Labor, and what that means for Queensland is just to keep a roof over their head. Shadow Housing Minister Tim Mander, who is the local MP for what is a key battleground here in the northern suburbs of Brisbane, he's outlined solutions for the most vulnerable, including unleashing the community housing sector and setting KPIs for the delivery of social housing on time and on budget. It's my pleasure today to reveal the next part of our comprehensive plan for housing. 
This announcement is a clear demonstration of how having the right priorities will guide us in finding the solutions to one of the biggest challenges facing our state, and that is falling rates of home ownership. The LNP is the only party that understands that owning your own home is a priority for Queenslanders. The great Australian dream of owning a home has become an unattainable nightmare for too many Queenslanders and we must end that. Yeah. We've got to give hope. And it's a fact that Queensland now has the lowest home ownership rate in the country at 64%. Queensland's fall in home ownership over half a century has been three times greater than the national average. The biggest impact has been on young Queenslanders. In 1971, 53% of 25 to 29 year olds in Queensland owned their own home. In 2021, that has plummeted to 35%. Queenslanders aged 30 to 34, they've also been pushed out of the market. Their numbers falling from 63% to 49% over that same period. And these figures paint a dire picture. While the dream of home ownership is fading fast under Labor, we are going to give a generation of Queenslanders hope of owning their own home. I want, I want to ensure that my daughters and their generation are able to own a home in the state that they love. I understand some Queenslanders choose to go another way, and, and that's their right. But today, many people, particularly young people, don't believe that they have a choice. It's being forced on them that they can't buy a home. And the Queensland housing crisis is putting that dream out of their reach. I fundamentally believe in giving people the choice to own their own home. We all do. It's our values. I want young Queenslanders, wherever they live, to know that they can have that opportunity, that they can aspire to it, and better still, we have solutions to give them that choice. This includes Indigenous communities, where for too long governments have failed to put in place the systems to ensure anyone in these communities can own a home at all. Many young Queenslanders have told me they have given up on the Great Australian Dream. They fear they will never own their own home, and that is heartbreaking. I've often said I want to offer Queenslanders something different to what they are off being offered now. That is to choose hope over fear. I want Queenslanders to have hope that their ambition for owning a home is matched by our ambition to give that to them. And so today I announce an ambitious 10-year plan for Queensland to have the highest home ownership rate in the country by 2034. <laughs> I acknowledge that this is bold, to go from last place to first within a decade, but we owe that to a generation of young Queenslanders. Yeah. And it's going to take focus and perseverance. So that's why I'm today announcing that if elected, then the LNP government will appoint the country's first ever Minister for Home Ownership, a single point of accountability. State governments, if brave enough, can play a part in giving people hope. And there are three areas we are going to focus on. We will prioritise new tax relief options, looking at issues like transfer duty, concessions, first home buyer thresholds, it's all on the table. We will prioritise building an incentive scheme to support home ownership, examining areas including how the first homeowner grant works and how it applies, shared responsibility schemes. And thirdly, we will prioritise developing options to open up more land to give more people the opportunity to have a roof over their head. All ideas are on the table, and just yesterday this body discussed and developed one. 
and that is the opportunity to allow first home buyers to avoid being punished for earning income on their principal place of residence. That idea has merit and it will be considered. Given the areas of focus, there is only one ministry that can achieve this goal as a single point of accountability. And that is why, under a government I lead, the state's first new Minister for Home Ownership will also be the Treasurer. We will bring the power of Treasury to one of the most senior Ministers in government to fix one of the most pressing problems for our state. I don't believe we have time to waste. So this week I will be asking David Janetsky to serve as the state's first ever Shadow Minister for Home Affordability. I plan, I plan for David to hold the portfolio of Shadow Minister for Home Ownership in Government and I plan for him to liaise with everyone in the sector to listen and develop a brave set of policies to get young people back in the market. It will be a long road. It will be a tough road. The government is going to take advantage of every leg up they've built into the system. Whether it be the financial gerrymander they created, whether it be the self-serving changes to the voting system, this government doesn't play fair. We know that. But I will not accept those excuses and we will go and overcome the obstacles because Queenslanders deserve a better government. And this state needs new leadership. The chaos and crisis of this government is crueling the dreams of a generation of Queenslanders. It is my responsibility, the responsibility of every person in this room, to work together to remove a government that gave up on governing for Queenslanders a long, long time ago. The people of Queensland deserve nothing less than our total commitment to this cause. It's their cause. And that is making the future of Queensland better than it is today. Friends, over the next 12 months, we will prove to Queenslanders we have listened to them. We will prove to Queenslanders we are ready to govern for them. We will prove to Queenslanders we will focus on them. And we will prove to Queenslanders that only an LNP government will deliver the right priorities for Queensland's future. Thank you all very much.